Sutra, the master added, All of you good knowing advisors should purify your minds and listen to my explanation of the Dharma. If you wish to realize all knowledge, you must understand the Samadhi of one mark and the Samadhi of one conduct. If you do not dwell in marks anywhere and do not give rise to hate or love, do not grasp or reject and do not calculate advantage or disadvantage, production and destruction while in the midst of marks, but instead remain tranquil, calm and yielding, then you will have achieved the Samadhi of one mark. In all places, whether walking, standing, sitting or lying down, to maintain a straight and uniform mind, to attain the unmoving body manda and the true realization of the pure land. That is called the Samadhi of One Conduct. Commentary Wash your mind clean, said the Master, and get rid of the greed, hate, and delusion. If you wish to realize all knowledge, you need to understand the Samadhi of One Mark, which consists in not dwelling in marks and the samadhi of one conduct, which consists in no dwelling in conduct. The samadhi of one mark, whether you are in a good place or a bad place, whether moving or still, do not dwell in marks. Why in the midst of marks, do not give rise to dislike or to fondness. Neither love nor hate should move the mind, the mind should not grasp or reject. If you have a thought of love, you will grasp at the object of your desire. The twelve conditioned causes say, love conditions, grasping, grasping conditions, existence. To reject means to cast away. If you hate something, then you reject it. Love and hate cause grasping and rejecting. Do not calculate advantage and disadvantage. If you think, what's in it for me? You are just being greedy, self-seeking, and impure. Do you understand? You should not have such thoughts. You should remain tranquil with nothing at all to do and calm like a water without waves. No waves means no afflictions, no love, no hate, no grasping, no rejecting, no advantage, no disadvantage, no success, and no failure. You should be yielding like empty space. Take a look. Everything comes from empty space and yet empty space does nothing at all. It does not set itself up as boss and say, Go be born, go die. Everything is born and dies within it, undergoing transformations in, in a most natural way without the slightest difficulty. Yield and be flexible. If you are flexible, then whatever happens just happens. That's the way it is. There is no greed, hatred, or delusion. There is nothing at all. With a few ones, one is content, being without longing or self-seeking. It is no use to think, wait until my book gets published, I will be a famous scholar. You may want to do something strange to make the world take notice of you, but you should not have such ideas. You should decrease your desires, no matter what they are, and always be content. Knowing enough, you're always happy able to be patient, you're at peace. If you can tranquil, calm, and yielding and have marks while in the midst of them, if you can transcend the dust while in the dust, just that is the summary of one mark. The summary of one conduct, no matter where you are, in a good place and a bad place, a, an, a wholesome place, an unwholesome place, a right place, a wrong place, walking, standing, sitting or lying down, maintain a direct mind. The direct mind is the Bodhi Mandala. Students of the Buddha Dharma should not be devious. Be direct in your thoughts, words and deeds. Speak your mind. Don't think east and speak west. The straight mind is the Bodhi Mandala. If the cause of if the cause is not straight, the results will be cooked. Your mind should be uniform and of one purity. You who cultivate the way toward others, toward yourself, toward everything, be straightforward. Don't try to trick people out of their money. No matter how poor you are, if you borrow a little money and return it right away, you have not lost the virtue of a gentleman. 
a gentleman. But if you borrow and don't return it, your position is very low. Be an unmoving Bodhi Mandala with a straightforward mind, for that is the realization of a pure land, and is called the Samadhi of one conduct. Sutra, one who perfects the two Samadhis is like earth, in which seeds are planted, buried in the ground, they are nourished and grow, ripening and bearing fruit. The one mark and one conduct are just like that. I now speak the drama which is like the falling of the tummy rain moistening the, the great earth. Your Buddha nature is like the seeds which, receiving moisture, will sprout and grow. Those who receive my teaching will surely obtain body, and those who practice my conduct will certainly certify to the wonderful fruit. Listen to my verse. The mind ground contains every seed. Under the universal rain, they will sprout, flower and feeling set in enlightenment. The body fruit accomplishes itself. After speaking the verse, the master said, Dharma is not dual nor is the mind, and the way is pure and without marks. All of you take care not to contemplate stillness or empty the mind. The mind is basically pure and does not grasp or reject anything. Each of you work hard and go well in harmony with circumstances. At that time, his followers made obeisance and withdrew. Commentary The timely rain falls just when it is needed. If it falls too soon, it may drown the crops, and if it comes too late, it may wither, wither and die. They may wither and die. The sick Vajra's drama is like the timely rain which moistens all of the great earth. Your own inherent Buddha nature is like seeds which receive the moisture and flourish, ripening into Bodhi fruits. The Bodhi sprouts become Bodhi fruits. The Master went on, You who understand my doctrine are certain to obtain Bodhi. If you cultivate according to this method, you will surely obtain the wonderful body fruit. Now that I have spoken so much drama for you, you are probably all flustered. So pay attention while I speak this verse. Purify your minds. Your self-nature contains every seed. At the tummy rain, they all sprout. When sentient beings suddenly enlighten, the flower opens, the fruit is ripened. And the body fruit accomplishes itself. The wonderful fruit of body ripens of itself. Bodhi Dharma said the fruit comes to bear of itself. And the sixth Vajrayak said the body fruit accomplishes itself. They were speaking of all of you who have the Dharma name Kua, fruit. You should ripen throughout the world. All places should reap this fruit. What fruit? The body fruit. The Sikh Vajrayaka was afraid that you might have not understood, and so he spoke it very clearly. The body fruit accomplishes itself. You should all repent on your own. I cannot help you. If you don't repent, you are just treating yourselves. So repent. Isn't this strange? Your Dharma names all begin with the word fruit, and our school's transmission verse says so. Say also. Say so also. Contemplating, cultivating the, the ever blissful fruit, personally transmitting the unconditioned teaching. In the future, all of you will personally transmit the unconditioned teaching. The master went on, My sudden enlightenment drama door is not two, it is one. What is the one? It is just the sudden teaching. The mind is not two either, therefore it should return to the one. The way we cultivate is pure and without marks. Although it is without marks, don't make the mistake of contemplating stillness because that is just another attachment. Do not loiter in dull emptiness either because the mind of living beings is naturally and fundamentally pure. The original substance of the mind is pure and immaculate without grasping or rejecting. Work hard, all of you, go forward and don't be lazy. Go where circumstances take you and build Buddha mandalas. Be good, cultivate good, conduct and work hard. 
Sutra, on the eighth day of the seventh month, the master suddenly said to his disciples, "I wish to return to Sintro quickly, ready a boat and was." The great assembly and entreated him earnestly to stay, but the master said, "All Buddhas appear in the world and then are seen to enter Nibbana. This body of mine must return somewhere." The assembly said, "Master, you are leaving, but sooner or later you will return." The master said, "Leaving le- falling leaves, return to the root. There was no day on which I came." They further asked, "Who has received the transmission of the right Dharma Eye Treasury?" The master said, "The one who has the way obtains it. The one without a mind penetrates it." Commentary: Patriarch said. The assembly, you are leaving now, but we can't believe that you will enter Nirvana. Sooner or later, you will come back, won't you? The master said, just as leaves fall and return to the root of the trees, I must go. Besides, there was no day on which I came. The Chinese text reads, "When I came, I had no mouth," but this is a misprint for the word "day." However, you can also explain it as when I came, I had no mouth. On the day when the patriarch came into this world, he had no mouth. That is, he had no words. He did not speak Dharma when he came, and he did not speak Dharma when he left. Coming and going, he did not speak Dharma. The Dharma does not increase or decrease, and although he spoke Dharma for so many years, he never spoke Dharma at all. There are no fixed dogmas. You can explain it any way you wish, as long as you are in accord with principle. But if you don't explain it correctly, you can explain your listeners right into the house, and that is taking the unfixed dogma too far. The patriarch's disciples, unable to bear the thought of their master's imminent departure, tried to delay him with questions until the master. In exasperation, probably decided that they were just too much trouble. I'm getting out of here. He probably thought, the right dharma eye treasury refers to the robe and bow. So many disciples, and yet not one of them knew who had received the dharma transmission. If they hadn't been greedy for it themselves, they wouldn't have asked this question. Why else would they be standing in the river and gazing out into the sea? If you weren't longing for the sea, why would you be standing there? Everyone thought the rope and bow was extremely important, but the sick patriarch was not a businessman. If he had been at sixty-five dollars a transmission, he could have made a lot of money. Who got the transmission? The one who has the way obtains it. The one without a mind penetrates it. Whoever has no self-seeking mind understands my dharma, because he has obtained the summaries of the one mark and the one conduct. The sixth vajra's dharma is to be found in these verses and these principles, and if you cultivate according to them, you will obtain his dharma. Sutra. They further asked, in the future, there won't be any difficulties, will there? The master said, "Five or six years after my extinction, a man will come to take my head, listen to my verse, offerings to the parents with a bowed head. There must be food in the mouth when the difficulty of man is met. The officials will be young and ill." Commentary: Remembering the demonic difficulties which. Had be said the master during his lifetime, assassination attempts, arson, thievery, and spying. The master's disciples wondered what would happen when he was gone. I know that the sutra does not record all of the hardships the master underwent. There were at least six attempts made to steal the robe and bow, and the thieves were armed and prepared to kill the master if necessary. So his disciples asked. Hopefully, there won't be any difficulties like that in the future, will there? No one will want to kill us, will they? Will they try to kill us instead of you? While he was alive, they tried to take his life. After his death, they tried to steal his head. 
In those days, it wasn't easy to be patriarch. It's not so difficult today, however, so don't retreat. The sixth patriarch's verse was a prophecy. No one understood it at the time, but later it came true. Five or six years late, after the master's death, a Korean monk named Chin Ta Pei hired Chen Ching Man of Hong Chou to steal the patriarch's head and bring it back to Korea so that he could make offerings to it. Chen Ching Man was poor and hungry, and so he took the money because there must be food in the mouth. The Korean monk was no doubt very rich. At the time of the difficulty of Chen Ching Man, the magistrate was named Liu Tian and the governor was named Yang Khan. The flesh body of the patriarch was housed in the pagoda. Having heard the master's prediction, his disciples had bowed his neck with the sheaths of iron for protection. Chen Ching Man chopped at it with his knife, but he wasn't able to remove the master's head. He made a lot of noise, and when the pictures came running to catch him, they saw a man wearing white mourning clothes run from the pagoda. The bishops reported the incident to the police, and within five days, the thief was arrested and brought to Nanqua Temple to be tried. Why did you try to steal the sick Bajak's head? they asked. A Korean monk paid me to do it, he said. I was hungry, so I took his money. The magistrate turned to the master's disciple, Ling Tao, and said, What do we do now? Ling Tao said, According to the law, he deserves to die, but in the Buddha's teaching, there are no friends or enemies. Besides, the master predicted this would happen. Let him go. The Buddha's gate is indeed wide, said the magistrate, and he set the criminal free. Sutra, the master also said, Seventy years after my departure, two bodhisattvas, one who has left home and one who is a layman, will simultaneously came from the east to propagate and transform. They will establish my school, build and restore monasteries, and glorify the Dharma for its years. Commentary The Bodhisattva who had left was Patriarch Matsu Tao Yi. He built many monasteries in China. It is said Matsu built the temples and Pang Chai wrote the rules. Pang Chai was Matsu's drama successor. The Bodhisattva who had not left home was Pang Yun, the enlightened layman. His entire family was enlightened wife, daughter, and son, and they all went to Nirvana. Layman Pang had been incredibly wealthy, but he built a big boat one day, put all of his money in it, and sailed out to sea and dumped it overboard. Some say that the two bodhisattvas are Diana Master Huang Po and Layman Pei Xiao. Then you may explain it any way you like, as long as you pick two people, a monk and a layman. Layman Pang gave all his money as a gift to use for remodeling the dragon palace at the bottom of the sea. He returned to his home and took up a lowly occupation, and in the midst of their bitter poverty, the Pang family cultivated the way. One day Mr. Pang sighed, It's hard, it's hard, it's really just as hard as putting seeds on all the leaves of trees in the yard. What do you know, old man? said Mrs. Pang. It's not hard at all. In fact, it's easy, it's easy. It's easy because I find on the tip of every blade of grass the patriarch's mind. She thought it was easy and he thought it was hard. Then their little daughter came and disagreed with both of them. It's not easy, it's not hard. I eat when I'm hungry and I sleep when I'm tired. There's nothing to eat, she said. Although Mr. Pong was married, he and his wife were like good friends and did not carry on like ordinary men and women. As a consequence, they became enlightened. Lay people should all imitate their inconceivable purity. Sutra, the assembly made obeisance again and asked, Will you please let us 
asks know for how many generations the teaching has been transmitted since the first Buddhas and Patriarchs appeared in the world. The Master said, the Buddhas of antiquity who have responded to appear in the world are numberless and uncountable. Commentary, their number is incalculable, said the Master. Besides, I never learned to read or write and I'm not very good at arithmetic, so let's not count them. Sutra, but now I will begin with the last seven Buddhas. In the past, Udon and there were Vipashin Buddha, Shikin Buddha, and Vishvapu Buddha. In the present, Worthy and there have been Grakushanda Buddha, Kana Kamuni Buddha, Kashyapa Buddha, and Chakyomni Buddha. Commentary in the Adon Aeon, Alankara Kampa, a thousand Buddhas appeared in the world. The, the 998th Buddha of that Kampa was the Pashin Buddha. His name means Victorious Contemplation. Every kind of contemplation, Victorious View, or every kind of view. If you just remember the Pashin Buddha that will do for general purposes. Shikin Buddha. Shikin is translated as fire. Vishya Vabu Buddha was the last Buddha of the adult end. We are now living in the worthy end. Bandrakampa, so called because many worthy sages will appear during it. Of the thousand Buddhas of this aeon, Karaguchanda Buddha was the first. His name means worthy of offerings because he should receive the offerings of humans and gods. His name also means adornment. The second Buddha was Kana Kamuni, the third Kashyapa, and the fourth Shakyamuni. These are the most recent Buddhas. Sutra from Shakyamuni Buddha, the transmission went to Arya Mahakashyapa, Arya Ananda, Arya Sanakavasa, Arya Upagupta, Arya Dagdaka, Arya Nikaka, Arya Vasumitra, Arya Buddha Nandi, Arya Buddha Mitra, Arya Bashva. Commentary, Shakyamuni Buddha in the midst of the millions of humans and gods who were circumambulating him picked up a flower and Mahakashyapa, the first patriarch, had to smile. No one knew what was happening when Shakyamuni Buddha said, I have the right Dharma eye treasury, the wonderful mind of Nirvana, the real mark which is unmarked. This is the mind to mind transmission. Transmitted outside the teaching, I have already given it to Mahakashyapa in my to my transmission. The third patriarch, the venerable Sanakavasa, was born wearing clothes, and as he grew, his clothes grew along with him. Uh, after he left home under Arya Ananda, his clothes changed into a great Samgati robe. Just before he died, he said, This robe will not decay until Shakyamuni Buddha's Dharma is completely extinguished. The tenth patriarch, Arya Pashva, lived in his mother's womb for more than 60 years. He was born with white hair and a white beard, just like Lao Tzu in China. Lao Tzu lived in his mother's womb for 81 years and was born with white hair and a long white beard. They named him Lao Tzu, which means Old Tried, but he was actually a reincarnation of Mahakashyapa. He was reborn in China because Shakyamuni Buddha had noticed that the Chinese had good karmic roots. Most of them did not believe in the Buddha. However, so Mahakashyapa was sent to China to found the religion of Taoism, which is the same as the Brahman religion of India and which cultivates purity of conduct. Arya Pashva, the 10th patriarch, was born with a liking for cultivation. When he met the 9th patriarch, Buddha Mitra, he left home and the Dharma door of the Buddha's mind seal was transmitted to him. 
Sutra Arya Punya Yashas Mahasatva Ashvabosha Arya Kapimala Mahasatva Nagarunya Arya Ganadeva Arya Rahulata Arya Sanghanandi Arya Ayashada Commentary when the 11th Patriarch Punya Yashas met Bhashva, he asked him, How can I realize Buddhahood? Bhashva said, You wish to realize Buddhahood, it is just what your present non realization. Punya Yasha said, You say that my present non realization is the Buddha, but how can I know that? Bhashva replied, how can you know that your present non-realization is not the Buddha? With that question and that answer, Punya Yashas became enlightened and received the Dharma transmission. Later on, he met the great master Yashvagosha, the 11th patriarch. Mahasattva Yashvagosha was extremely intelligent. Punya Yashas knew that Ashvagosha's conditions were ripe. He was, all, uh, he was ready to become the 12th Patriarch. When Puniyashas went to teach him, Yashvagosha asked, How can I know the Buddha? Puniyashas said, You wish to know the Buddha? It, he is just your not knowing. Yashvagosha said, Not knowing the Buddha, how can I know that my not knowing is the Buddha? Puniyashasha said, if you do not know the Buddha, how can you know that your not knowing is not the Buddha? Yashvagosha said, Ah, so this is the meaning of sawing. You say this and I say that, and we hack at the principle like sawing through a piece of wood. Punya Yashas replied, Ah, so that is the meaning of wood. But what is the meaning of sawing? Yashvagosha said, It shows what you are, and what is the meaning of wood? Buddha Yasha said, You have just been sought open by me. You have just been liberated by me. Ashvagosha was instantaneously enlightened. He left home, received the transmission, and became the twelfth patriarch. He was called Yasvagosha Horse Cry because when he spoke the drama, all the horses cried out. He was a Mahasattva, that is a great being, a great Bodhisattva. Nagaruna Bodhisattva, the 14th Patriarch, is the one who went to the Dragon Palace and brought back the Avatamsaka Sutra. He was very, very wise. Sanghanandi, the, the 17th Patriarch, asked Gyayashata, the 18th Patriarch, how old are you? The child replied, I am 100 years old. But you're so young, said the patriarch. How can you be 100 years old? If I were 100 years old and did not understand the Buddha, I would not be as good as a one-day-old baby who did. Hearing such an intelligent answer, the seventh patriarch let the child live the home life under him and later transmitted the Dharma to him. Sutra Arya Kumarata, Arya Yata, Arya Vasubandhu, Arya Manohita, Arya Aklena, Arya Ari Asimha, Arya Vasyasita, Arya Punyamitra, Arya Prayinatara, Arya Bodhidharma, Great Master Hui Guo, Great Master Sun San, Great Master Tao Tin, Great Master Hong Chen, and I Hui Neng am the 33rd Patriarch. Thus, the transmission has been handed down from Patriarch to Patriarch. In the future, transmit it accordingly from generation to generation. Do not allow it to become extinct. The assembly heard and faithfully accepted what the Master had said, bowed, and withdrew. Commentary Ari Yasimha, the 24th Patriarch, was a native of central India. In his practice of the Buddha Dharma, he traveled to Kashmir. The king of Kashmir 
did not believe in the Buddha but instead followed two non-Buddhist leaders who were intent on destroying Buddhism. As bishops were not allowed within the country, the king demanded of Arya Simha, Have you ended birth and death? Arya Simha wanted to convert the king. I have ended it, he answered. The Buddha's teaching says that practicing the Bodhisattva way, you must give up your head, your eyes, your brains, and your blood. You must give up whatever someone happens to need. Now I need your head. Give it to me. Since you have ended birth and death, you must give me your head. Can you do it? I don't even have birth or death, said Ariya what does, uh, what does it matter if I lose my head? It's yours. Take it. The king sliced off Ariya head, but instead of blood, a milky white fluid ran out of his neck. The king's arm fell to the ground. No one cut it off. It fell off by itself because he had murdered an heart. The king then put the two leaders of the non-Buddhist religion to death, but there was nothing special about their executions. They bled just like everyone else. The king prohibited the non-Buddhist religion and spread the Buddha Dharma widely.